Welcome to the MMA Roadshow, episode number 339. My name is John Morgan. Cold Coffee is with me. And once again, the whole crew's back together as far as I'm concerned. We're bringing him in. The World MMA Award nominated Hati himself, Oscar Willis. What's going on, crew? It's good to be back. Thank you very much, man. It's been a while, man. It's been a while since we've all been together. By the way, shout out to... The audience that we've got along here with us as well. The biggest fan. The one and only <laughs> Jose Youngs. Keeps telling me he wants to be involved in the mixed martial arts media game, mm -hmm. and he just wants to kind of tag along, hope maybe he can get his name out there, just kind of pick up from some of the best, you know what I'm saying? And, Jose, I promise you keep doing this. You're going to land a spot, keep, buddy. Just, just stay strong. Grinding. Stay keep the grinding. course. Grinding, man. It'll all pay off for you at some point. Guys. Uh, we're coming to everyone a day early. We'll just throw it out there. It's, it's UFC 266. It's International Fight Week. Normally, we sit down on a Thursday night. But this this particular Wednesday, we have gathered at the spiritual birthplace of the MMA Road Show. That's right. Buffalo Wild Wings at Warm Springs and Durango. <laughs> Let me just throw a shout out. Completely redesigned. Yeah. It has been, well, I mean, maybe redesign might not be the right word. Like all the <laughs> stuff right the same. Yeah. Uh, what do you say? It's, uh, new paint, new new furniture, new updated, I guess? Updated is probably the right word, right? So if you, it's not redesigned. <laughs> Everything is really in the same place. It's literally the same place. You guys place. don't come in here enough. All these TVs are new. All the furniture is new. I mean, to be fair, when I got here, I didn't recognize that it was the one we usually come into. In and I fairness, you've you really, you very rarely walked in here sober either. That's so it true. didn't it didn't surprise me that you didn't recognize it. But here we are on a Wednesday, and that's because well, tomorrow is going to be kind of a crazy night. Uh, it's going to be the, uh, the the UFC Hall of Fame is back, so the induction ceremony will be going on. The red carpet will be going on. There's it's going to be a hectic day. There's Some a press people would conference. call it a shit showtime. Oh, shit showtime. Look at what <laughs> you did there. Look at what Topical. you did. <laughs> Topical. <laughs> so we decided to get together today and uh, listen. The media day is in the books. We did have a chance to speak to everybody, and uh, well, I say everybody. Not quite everybody. Mm. Should we just start right there? I think we do. Even though we're talking about championship fights, we're talking about title fights. I mean, the biggest news of the day had to be... No John Hooker. No Dan <laughs> Hooker, which we were shocked to see. We thought the visa would be worked out in time, and he wasn't. No, 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 of course. The big shocker, of course. Well, I don't even want to say big shocker, right? <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, was, yeah, was it? Yeah. Was it really? Yes. Nick Diaz did not make his way to the media day. And I guess let's just start right there. I mean, I, it, I mean, kind of not a shocker, right? Like, it's, I mean, listen. Nate no showed his media day back in Anaheim. Uh, when was that? A couple years back. I mean, I think we all kind of showed up there, not really expecting Nick to be a part of. It. At least I did. I mean, did well, yeah. Were you, I, mean, I think we all held out hope, right? I mean, he's. I think it was. That's the, that's the thing is the UFC waited so long. Like they themselves, you could tell they were trying. The fact that they didn't just at some point say, "Guys, this probably isn't going to happen." They held out hope. I think to the very last moment, like when he was like, "Yeah, no, I'm going to be walking out the door." To their credit, they were very apologetic. It seemed, and they, I mean, it's not their fault, you know. what I mean, they were apologetic. I, I wasn't. You know, it was funny. I was, I was in our chat. I was seeing Cook Coffee. You were streaming the thing live, and I was, as, as we had time to sit there and wait, I was kind of chatting, chatting with people that were, that were watching. And um, I, I think, you know, they were like, "Oh, is it annoying?" They have to be like, "I'm not really annoyed by the fact." Like, I get it, especially with Nick. Like, I think we understand, kind of his. I don't want to say mental because that sounds like a bad thing, but it's, it's anxiety. Like, he doesn't like dealing with this stuff, right? He doesn't want to be a part of it. And so, to be honest, I never really expected him to be there. So I don't really – I'm not really all that concerned with it, right? Like, sure, I would love for him to be there because I'd love to have the views. We know he brings it. Like, he's the biggest star on the card. I'd love yeah. it. I, I don't – I'm not one of those people that's going to be like, he wasted my time. I showed up to talk. No, 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 no. I don't – these guys don't yeah. owe us anything. But I will say this, though. When you add in the combination of the fact that we know that he asked for the fight at 185 pounds instead yeah. of 170, isn't that the part where it becomes concerning? Because had he just no-showed, no big deal, and, 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 you know, we hear, oh, everything is going good, he's excited, he just doesn't want to talk to you guys today, I go, okay, no big deal. But the fact that we know, you know, the week of the fight, he's asking to move this thing up to middleweight, and now he's no-showing the media day, um, I don't know, guys, concerning? Yeah, massively concerning. I think, <coughs> excuse me, I think the, uh, I'm seeing a lot of people say like, oh, typical Nick, typical Nick, ha, 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 ha. I don't think it is typical Nick. I mean, it is. But also at the same time, uh, he uploaded a picture of himself and his, I think his girlfriend in a club on Tuesday night. Uh, the next day he asked for the fight to be at 185. That doesn't scream to me like a great fight week for him. And then today uh, he didn't speak to us. 
which is fine. But he was on the embedded and he didn't look too thrilled to be here. I think a lot of people are suggesting that this is just Nick's old sort of uh, rebellious behavior. I actually don't think it is. I think it's probably... Uh, I'm concerned. I have concerns about uh, where his... Uh, his headspace is right now. And his know. desire to feel. I mean, I, like, as we sit here on Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, talking about this, I'm not, A, I'm not 100% sure that he's going to show up at the press conference tomorrow, which the USC says, oh, oh you'll get him at the press conference. Yeah. Not sure that. But, B, I'm honestly at this point a little concerned this fight's not going to happen. Yeah, I, I've, I've, I think, John, since they announced it, I said I didn't think the fight was going to happen. Um, I think Nick is a weird one, right, where because he's always been kind of a little bit unconventional, we'll say, he reminds me of like Diego Sanchez, you know, where he's always been a little bit quirky, sure. so it's very hard to tell, oh, has he has he gotten worse or has he just always been like this and it's hard to sort of remember. Lest we forget, the last time Nick Diaz was speaking on camera was in an interview with Ariel Hawani back last, uh, in 2019, and I thought he was pretty obviously intoxicated in that interview. He right. didn't look very healthy at all. If you've had any attention on his social media over the past five or whatever years, he's always drinking and stuff. Uh, <laughs> I think we... Sounds like this group. Yeah, well, fair. <laughs> I, I the think, nerve of that guy. I just think... Uh, I think people are so excited to see Nick back that they're ignoring, you know, we just watched Holyfield do this. Mm. You know, I think we're ignoring the very real nature of, of combat sports, the real very real nature of the people involved in combat sports and how they can sometimes influence a guy to fight. I don't have any evidence for this. I'm just sharing my concern. But, um, yeah, I mean. This well, the one clip we saw on the embedded, right, was uh, somebody asked him off camera, like, did, did you miss any of this? Or I don't remember exactly how it was a phrase. Yeah, so, so it someone said, did you, did, you, oh, did you miss any of fight week? And he just went, no. no. And that was it. That was it. Didn't not, say much. Not like, ah, oh, you know what, seeing the – I mean, obviously, again, I always say – preface it by saying of course he's not you know the most outspoken articulate guy and he knows that you know I, re I remember you know recently I wrote a piece about the the history of that infamous diatribe outside the, yes. the Grant Sawyer office building and it, it was funny to go back and, and watch that it had been so long since I'd really seen the whole thing in its entirety Me too. and even he says like I know I'm just rambling I'm just you know I mean he's aware of the fact that he's not necessarily the greatest communicator sometimes but for him to just say like no not like, ah, I miss seeing the guys or I miss, you know, miss seeing so-and-so or hanging out. I mean, I, I don't know. I just – and, again, if, if, if there wasn't the added thing of him asking to move it up a division, I don't think I'd be as concerned. But I'm really concerned right now that, that this fight's not going to happen. And, listen, so you say, okay, well, so what, man? I mean, it's, it's, and I will say, okay, so what? I'm still working on Saturday night regardless. Yes. It doesn't, it doesn't yes. affect me personally. It's not like if Nick Diaz knows it. But I will say I was talking to a, a buddy of mine on the way over here as we were driving over here. You guys know Tony, huge Nick Diaz fan, you know, and he, he wants to go to the fight. He doesn't have tickets yet, but he was thinking about buying tickets, and he's like, I, I, hmm. I don't know, you know. Like, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, isn't if you're like a big Nick Diaz fan and you know tickets are not cheap, I mean, aren't you a little concerned right now? Like, I want to see my guy, but do I want to invest five hundred, six hundred, eight hundred, a thousand dollars, and my guy doesn't show up on Saturday night? Well, it's also not just that, right? It's, I want to see my guy, but are you willing to see him at any cost? Are you willing to see him in any form? You know, I, I would be, and I'm concerned about this because. Look, Robbie can say what he wants as well. That oh, he doesn't mind, he doesn't care, he's focused on himself. I don't think you start cutting weight, get to. Wednesday of fight week and think, oh, well, all right, we'll do it at 185. I'm sure he was incredibly irked by that, whether right. he wanted to admit it or not. Uh, so he's not going to fight like, oh, I'll help, I'll help Nick through this fight. I'm sure he's going to come out and try and, and try and knock Nick out. And I just have, I'm concerned, man. You know. Yeah. All right. Let's let's do this. I'm not. You're not concerned yeah. at all. I think he'll be fine. You think he's going to show? I think he's going to show up. I think he's going to show up. And do you I think, think he makes weight you, at 185. For middleweight, yeah, I think so. I think it'll be fine. Do you think he gets on the scales like in the two hours allotted time that he's never had to do before? I think he'll show up at the very end just because he knows he has a two-hour window. Just like today, I like it'd be one thing if this was the first time we saw it. Because like when you said, I could see where some people are like, "Why aren't you freaking out?" It's because it's not the first time. Right. It's not the first time we've seen anything like that. I just think it's a matter of you know, the whole fight weeks brings a lot of emotions and a lot of everything back, and this is something that he's wanted to do, and I think. But there's probably been also a lot of pressure on him from his fans, from his family, from all the people, all the little dingleberries that hang around him and stuff, and pushing him and saying whatever. Dingleberries. I, don't know. I, I mean, like, I sort of feel that today. I mean, I just think he he carries so much weight that there's so much pressure on his shoulders that for somebody that's like 
he wants to come in and do the bare minimum. He wants to come in and do the bare minimum, but he understands that there are obligations to do it. Right. But I think for him to be him, there's got to be some sort of level of him pushing back, some sort of level of like, I'm going to do it my way. I know I have to do this. I'm just going to do it my way. There might have been something in his head where he ultimately thought, like, the UFC wants me to fight. They can't find a person that, that I want to fight or a person that is willing to fight me That's gonna that they're going to pay the money for it. So maybe in his mind, when they came up with Lawler, when they came up with the welterweight, he's like, I don't know if that's going to be a reality anyways, you know, but I'll agree to it because I like the thing and I like the money or whatever. But in his mind, maybe he meant to always at this point fight to 185, but he couldn't get them to agree to fight on that. But this is another so way like, for I him. I know how to make it happen. I know how to make it happen, you know. And then, but for today, he knows <laughs> Nick he's Nick does understand the game. I'll give you that. And and, and the, he, he doesn't want to have to answer those questions. I mean, will he show up tomorrow? He, he does know that he's obligated, to, that he has to do some sort of media I think he'll show up tomorrow. I, I'm at least confident he's going to show up. But I also think that he'll be able to make the fight because he knows if he doesn't, uh, if he doesn't win, if he doesn't do whatever, what's the whole point? What was the whole point of agreeing to the fight? So I have to, th I have to think that he's at least going to be professional enough to make at least 185 and to show up for the fight week. I think it's just a matter of you know. I just hope so. It's just. Because you're, everything you're saying is spot on. Like even when I think about it, right? Like how much of a quality interview were we really hoping for today? Even if he had exactly. shown up, you know what I mean? It's so like again, that part doesn't bother me. The fact that he no showed us, the fact that he goes to stay, I 99.9 percent in my head never thought he would be here today. Yeah, it's just that damn weight class change that makes yeah. me think, oh my God, is he going? Like, is he even going to show up? I, I think I think this is just him getting what he wanted from the get go but they wouldn't agree to give him a middleweight fight. That's I think this is his way of, of getting it because I'm never worried about the Diaz brothers missing, making weight. Right. I, I'm just not worried about it. I mean, like, those guys run like we drank beer. I mean, they do it all the time. Studs. They're always in shape, you know. Yep. Um, I definitely don't I'm definitely don't get the vibe of, like, like this is an Evander Holyfield moment or anything by any means. I mean, is it maybe the same, uh, you know, Nick that we've seen in the past? No, because a lot of time has changed, but – you know, same with Robbie. Robbie's not the same Robbie that we used to see as well. You right. know, that's why I think this fight makes a lot of sense. You know, the greatest thing about today, what, what was unique, was that we had more people than ever lately tuning into a media day, and they did it for one reason, one reason alone. They wanted to hear from Nick. They wanted to see Nick. But, but I saw a lot of them turning on him and say. Why didn't you show up? The only reason That's I'm here is to hear from you, Nick. I want to hear from my guy. Th they're not real. I mean, they're not full on. Diaz Army. I mean, like a Diaz Army would never ever turn. Yeah, but maybe the sports. Just, maybe the sports just evolved. You know, maybe there's well, a lot the of people. I mean, I think I think the casuals that loved what he did, they'll they'll be quick because they were just bandwagon fans. The ones that turned on him, they were just bandwagon fans. Diaz Army is more like f you. You don't need to talk to the media. Good they're, for you. They're, <laughs> like, yeah, they're, these, they're like these, screw the media. These clowns just over here. Yeah. You know <laughs> they're just trying to find a way to make you look <laughs> bad, brother. You know, fuck them. You know. Um, but, no, I, I have uh, – you know, and maybe I'll be wrong, but I don't have any doubt in my mind that uh, Nick's going to show up and that that fight's going to happen. You think he shows up tomorrow at the presser? That's a little bit more questionable. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put the house down that he's going to, but I, um, I think if Dana pressured him and is like, brother, you got to do something. This is contractually obligated. If not, I'm going to change the dollar value on what you're getting paid. And if that's the case, he'll show up. Well, that's, I, that's I, I think he'll be there. I think he'll be there. has to care. I mean, they haven't seen this guy fight in six yeah. and a half years. They know what a star he is. But, again, I, you know, I'm talking about, uh, you know, uh, now again, I'm talking about one person, a friend of mine. But I've got to think there's other potential ticket buyers, other potential pay-per-view yeah. buyers. Can you imagine? What if they sell – and I get it. Card it's subject to, the to change. Tomorrow, card right? subject to change. There's going to be is. fans. Well, listen. It's different than walking to a room full of us. Oh, and he's going to be – because if we ask a question, they'll just start booing at us. Ship, that's <laughs> it. See, he's going to have the Diaz army in the crowd tomorrow so that if anybody asks him anything that's disparaging in the least, they're going to get shit on. So, I mean, he – I mean – now that now I feel completely confident. Now you, you talked yourself into it. I talked right. myself into let's it. Let's do this. All right, let's let's hear from uh, from Robbie Lawler. So Robbie Lawler did come in before we knew that Nick wasn't going to. That's the way the schedule worked out. I think Robbie Lawler, if I remember right, was number three on the schedule day out of uh, twelve people that we spoke to. Uh, originally supposed to be fourteen, but of course Dan Hoger and Nasrat Hakparas didn't show up. Was he first? First in? 
Thank you, uh, crowd over there cheering in. I'm telling you, we're going to find a spot for you in this industry, man. You just keep at it. You bring details like that, and we appreciate that. Robbie Lawler very early on. Uh, and as you can imagine, after the news had come out yesterday that, uh, you know, we, we were looking for a middleweight fight, that was, of course, what we had to address. And uh, here's the way uh, Robbie Lawler handled it. Good to see you, sir. Thank you. Uh, this uh, fight week is certainly taking kind of an interesting turn over the last couple of days. I guess uh, mentally, where are you with this whole situation of perhaps changing the weight class on, on, the, on the week of the fight? Uh, I mean, I'm ready to go. That's all that, that matters. Uh, camp went well and controlling the things I can control. Nice. It seems like weight class is normally something you can control. Uh, Dana said you were going to check in with him last night. Did you guys have that conversation about it last night? Yeah, we had a short conversation. And did you agree? Are you okay with moving this up to, to middleweight? It is what it is. Like, I'm ready to fight. So, like, we're moving forward. Was there any discussion at all? I mean, hey, I, I, need, I need a little extra money for this. Or maybe there's a little consideration of a new contract or something. That's, uh, I let... Uh, Dave do those kinds of things like he consults me and like figures it out but I don't we don't I don't get into the nuts and bolts of that stuff I know that's an interesting part of of this sport but I don't really discuss those things fair enough uh, can you tell us where you are in weight right now uh, I mean obviously I'm a little light uh, but I'm strong I'm fast so I'm ready to fight like camp camp went really well and uh, I've been doing this a long time so let's do it so what's the plan? Do you try to put on weight at this point? I mean, do you eat more than you normally would on a fight week or hydrate? I mean, what's what's the plan from here? Do you come in just well under the limit or, or what do you think? Uh, really, I'm just going to eat and just try to feel comfortable, make sure I'm eating. Well, the thing is, is like when you're doing this, when you're thinking you're going down to 70, you're cutting things out of your body and you don't necessarily want to put those back in, even though that those will, you don't know how they're going to affect you. So it's, eating more of good foods, which is hard because they're going to fill me up, but I don't know how heavy it'll make me. So it's just uh, play it by ear. My body feels good. I feel strong. So that, that's most important. Yeah. Do you have any idea what you will weigh on fight night or at least at the weigh-ins? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Interesting. Listen, I know obviously Nick's a, a legend of the sport. and He's paid his dues, but does this – I don't know, maybe affect your level of respect for him or anything like that. It just seems like a weird move to make. Uh, no, I don't, I don't really. I mean, he comes to fight. He's going through whatever he's going through. It's not, it is what it is kind of thing. Like, just kind of show up and fight. And uh, that's kind of the approach I'm taking. Like, just whatever. Nice. I guess last week for me, I mean, obviously you're a, an even keel guy most of the time, but does, so does this change anything at all? I mean, in terms of strategy or, you know, your psychology or, I mean, does this change anything? Because on the surface, it seems like a big deal, but you're just kind of like, eh, whatever. It's a uh, I'm just trying to stay calm. You know, there's no sense in like getting all riled up and excited. This happened. This, this is whatever. Just staying relaxed. I mean, camp went well. So that's pretty much what it comes down to. I'm falling back on the work I put in. The work I put in went great. My uh, training partner, Jason Jackson, got me tip top and ready to go. So, like, I'm, I'm sharp right now. I'm freaking strong. My coaches did a great job. So that's what I'm falling back on. That's why I'm not too worried about it. And life is good. Robbie, do you have any idea why Nick wants this at 185? Nope. Do you carry the way? No, it doesn't matter because that's just kind of where we're going now and it is what it is. It's... Do you think the weight change benefits you or him? I feel good. So that's, that's all that matters. So, like, I'm ready to fight. What are you even expecting from Nick at this point, right? He's been away from the, the cage for a while. He's obviously had a good time and enjoyed himself out of the cage. What exactly are you expecting from him on fight night? Um, I expect him to be uh, pretty sharp. I don't think he's a guy who doesn't do stuff. I mean, he's in shape. I think he's going to be sharp with his tools that he likes to do. But obviously, it's been a while since he's got in there. So it's getting his fight and we're, we're going to find out. All right, so Robbie Lawler, you know, is never going to be the, uh, you know, 
most talkative of fighters <laughs> ever. But I will say, um, I don't think he was being rude. I don't think he was being standoffish. I don't think he was being, uh, I don't know, I guess difficult. I just think that's honestly probably the way he feels. But, okay, now this is what I want to ask you guys. Knowing what we know now that Nick Diaz didn't show up, I, I don't know that he knew that he wasn't going to show up either, but do you think that maybe he was having the same concerns that we were and that, well, or at least that myself and, you know, Oscar Willis are. I've <laughs> coffee over here is 100% convinced now everything I'm is going to be fine. I talked myself into it. But what, what, I mean, what do, you, do you think Robbie Lawler was just like, ah, hell, like do you think he thinks at all, like uh, maybe I'm not going to have a fight? Because he just seemed very like, eh, whatever. I mean, again. That's Robbie. Caveat, that is Robbie. But I, I did. I just found it kind of impressive. He's just like, what? Because I would want to Maybe think, he has assurances I just, of I, getting something out of it regardless. I'm that sh- wouldn't be a bad play. I'm sure he does. I think uh, yeah. it's, it's probably more like, you know, simple as I was on a flight here at 9 o'clock at night and landed and, been, and was told that all the weight cutting I've been done up to now is a complete waste of time. And basically because I'm not as big a star as this other guy is who hasn't fought in six years, I have to do what they tell me to. Yeah. I'd probably be a bit pissed off the next yeah. day as well. I just wonder, I just wonder if, if, if maybe even going into it that Robbie was like, bro, he's got a history. You know, if I'm gonna, if I'm going to commit to do this, I'm going to do it. And if something happens that's out of our control and I make it to fight week and I get in there, I want something out of this. That wouldn't be a bad you know? play. For, it wouldn't be a bad play to have some money guaranteed. And here's the thing: is like, I mean, I'm not. And you know, I mean, you guys know me, man. I'm not. I'm not like, you know, the guy that's trying to like, oh, I want to hear some shit talk or whatever. But like, I would just think that somebody is changing the weight class, 15 pounds, yeah. on on fight week. You know, and by the way, I mean not deep into fight week, but not early in fight yeah, week either. Sunday, it wasn't Monday, Monday yeah. morning. It was yeah. Tuesday night. You know, I would think that. I mean, that Robbie could have at least just dropped a little, like, you know, I'm a little shocked that something. You know what I mean? Like, one of the comments, b- all the comments, a lot of the comments, and like as the live chat was going, they're like, Morgan's totally trying to lead him towards something, but Robbie just doesn't want to nope. say it. <laughs> and then somebody else said something, and that was the thing. They're like, I mean, I don't think they understand that we have to get that sort of stuff from it. We have to get where his mindset. But right. it's funny that they were like, it was almost like they were just like, just stop, man, just stop leave asking him to leave, leave Robbie alone. alone. <laughs> leave Robbie alone. <laughs> leave alone. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just I, – I, I guess, A, man, I guess either A, kudos to Robbie, or B, I, I don't know, because I, I would just think there would be at least one little piece of me that even, like I said, hey, I know this guy's a legend. Yeah. And he is. There is not a fighter on the on the planet that doesn't love the Diaz brothers as a fighter. But yeah. this is a move that's a little bit like, ah. Yeah. I mean, it's also – it's been over a year, though, that Robbie's been sitting in that seat before. He's been sitting in front of people. I mean, like, that leaves a lot of time for, you know – you know, to sit there and think, like, what does this mean? You know, am I glad that this is still just happening? And he's got – he's on a four-fight losing skid. There might be some part of him he's like, I could just be grateful that I'm here. That's true. You know, I mean – and but I love the mindset. I mean, but it also doesn't surprise me either. It's not like Robbie's ever been one of the ones that just sure. is just talking our ears off or whatever, and he's never been one to really – talk too much shit either but he also knows the game he knows what we're trying to get i mean like remember he used to hate doing media hate not it. that he loves you now. still asleep right? well yeah. i mean he just yeah, like it's never he doesn't hate it now he just dislikes it greatly it yeah. yeah so i mean it, it didn't it didn't surprise me in fact i actually thought his mindset was kind of refreshing he just seemed like he was a guy at peace mm-hmm. you know that he was he was at peace with what he does what his body's at you know how he's fighting um, he didn't want to be led to talk shit about whatever, you know, he didn't want to do whatever. So I thought it was actually kind of refreshing just to see, you know, that, you know, here's a guy that's been doing it so long, but still is like, I'm showing up. I did the work to get here. I'm showing up. I'm going to get this fight, but I'm still doing it my way. You're not going to get me to, to sell your articles. You're not going to get me to do whatever. In that sense, he's very much like Nick, and mm-hmm. where Nick's like, I'm not going to show up just to give you your 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 clicks and to give you your arguments. I'm I'm only contracted to go out there and fight this guy. That's all I'm really here to do. You know. I you just don't think he's going to be frustrated about losing his venom pay. <laughs> <laughs> I just think I think <laughs> which he had now. So that's o- at the overall, yeah, like, overall. So red. He's, he's gotta so he's got yeah, He's, yeah, he's, he's way up there. Tier, it's yeah. not like they're like, you like, know, bro, bro, you haven't fought in so long. 2500 bucks, bro. <laughs> 2500 bucks. I just think you're. I, I fear that we're judging Nick on his old behavior, and it's not that anymore. It's like you know, he used to do this because he knew his star power in the sport. He used to do this because he knew he could get away with it, and he wanted to push the UFC. And now it might just be, not that he knows he can get away with it, but he just doesn't want to. Oh. You know. I just. I just hope it doesn't translate in his performance, man. I mean, because let's be honest, even though there's two title fights 
in this card, man. I mean, the Nick Diaz return is such a huge yeah. part of this for MMA fans. So, fingers crossed, man. It's going to be Nick Diaz army hardcore fingers in in the, in the in the in the in the crowd. I mean, as much as I love the title fights or whatever, but you ask if you poll, you know, and I, I maybe I'll speak out of turn, but if you poll the people going, I guarantee he and that fight is going to be at the top of what people are, are paying attention Absolutely. to on this one. Absolutely. I mean, it's just easy. I mean, like, I like the Volk and Ortega fight. I like the Shevchenko fight. But you ask the casual person or, or just the regular person that's coming, they're coming because they're getting to see a guy they haven't seen step in the octagon forever. Yep. That's going to be the fight that people are like, are we going to are we going to throw some money down to watch this fight? He still does it. The Diaz still do it, you know. I mean, some some could say, you know, is the fight – if you remove that fight from this card, is the card even as good as it is right now? That's a huge. It's a huge card, deficit. But, but no, that's huge star power. It's a huge, huge, it's a huge power. subtraction if you take away. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I'm confident. I'm. I'm and maybe I'll. I'll do whatever. I'm just. Knock on I'm, some wood. I'm, Knock on some wood, though. I'm looking forward <laughs> to what uh, he could bring. And, and in my mind, maybe you know we see that there's been a large passage of time. Since the last time we saw it in, we saw him in there, mm -hmm. the game has moved very, very forward. But in his mind, maybe it hasn't. You know, it's it's not like we're singing, oh, here's a guy that's been out of the game. You know, he's he's been off doing other things. You know, I mean, in his mind, it might not be the the long deficit. He might not realize it's been years and years. He could still be in his mind as sharp as he thinks he's ever been. Well, it's so I, I look on my staff picks. I picked Robbie Lawler in this fight, and it's because I, look. But exactly what you're saying, like if Nick Diaz shows up and puts on a vintage Nick Diaz performance, I can't say that I'd be shocked. Like I feel like right. this is a guy that's just fighting and mixed martial arts is in his blood. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, and 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 he's going to be able to show up and do that. But I don't know. Remember how – coming in against a four loss in a row, yeah, Robbie Lawler. I know, but but the thing is, like I just. For anybody that's picking Nick Diaz, and I'm totally cool with that picking Nick Diaz, I but I don't. You pick Nick Diaz. I think here's what I understand: how could you? I know when I looked at you two mind. earlier, you were like, "Your mind." You guys said it. How can you confidently? That's what. That's <laughs> my question. I, anybody? I'd have to Nick double Diaz. back. I think how I did. How can you confidently pick Nick Diaz after six and a half years away? Now, if you're just saying because I like the guy and I believe, but I mean, those question marks are are way too tough to try to address, right? To me, yeah. To me, if you're if you're if you're wagering, if you're winning, it's either like Lawler or pass, right? Like you, you can't confidently look at Diaz and go, I know exactly what I'm going to see on Saturday night. That's true. No, <laughs> That's and true. also I think Robbie, Robbie's you know, last performances have not been stellar. He's really been uh, gun shy. He's not thrown much punches. But, you know, it wasn't that long ago he put Ben Askren's head through the canvas. I mean, he lost that, lost that fight. But he, can, he still has aggression in him. Right. And I will say, you know, he didn't want to reveal much today, but I will say he looks – like he's ready for a fight at the he very least. He looked in really good shape. He looked in great shape. He looked confident in that shape. Yeah, I don't know. He certainly Maybe looked I'm like being he a was pessimist. himself. I I, and again, as you said, I don't want to be a pessimist either. What happens if Nick comes in at like 190? Does Robbie at that point go, okay, now we've gone Well, does far. the commission yeah. not do that? Because well, yeah, if it's five pounds, well. a high, yeah. but I mean, because what if Robbie does even make the middleweight? Oh, dude, that's it's quite possible he Robbie's, won't even Robbie's make rolling up there with some pants on and a couple rolls of quarters. He might be pocket, like one eighty one or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just think uh, I mean a lot of people when when Nick walks into the Apex, I, multiple media members thought he looked right. He was around two hundred pounds. That oh. big? Because I tried looking, I didn't see him. Yeah, that's so, big. Oh. Oh, oh my gosh. All right. Well, he likes baggy clothes. Maybe it was just baggy clothes. I mean, you got packed in blunt somewhere, you know what I'm saying? They got <laughs> That's it. Bag, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, let's talk about uh, – He's got bags of weed stuck well, listen, under there. This is certainly going to remain the most intriguing storyline of the week. There's no question about it. But we do have a couple title fights. I did want to talk to you guys about Alexander Bokanowski versus Brian Ortega, a fight that, I'll be honest with you, uh, I know a lot of people didn't watch The Ultimate Fighter. I know a lot of people, what have you. I do feel like there's more flavor in this fight now oh, yeah. after they went through the ultimate fight. Am I crazy? Not that I wasn't excited about the fight when it was scheduled earlier this year, but I think I'm more excited about it now because I feel like there's a, it's just a little more something in there. Your first question pointed it out to, to both of them. And, and, like, I'm one of the ones that didn't really watch the season. I, well, not really watch. I didn't watch Still the season. Still time to binge watch. One Still of the ones. Time to binge but, when, watch. but when you were like, <laughs> do you really just want to punch them, punch him in the face, and their honest reactions – was awesome. Like, these are two guys that just really want to punch their opponent, you know. 
they're, they're, it, what's funny, I liked even that Brian was like, you know, we could probably sit in the room and actually be friends, right. you know, and actually or be whatever that I forget what he phrased. Good I acquaintances. What he used. Um, but it's funny because I mean, these are two guys that are going to want and go, want to go in there. They're going to want to throw down, but they actually now that they're actually so uh, just tweaked by each other's presence that the fact that they've been waiting so long to finally be able to get that release to punch one another. That's going to be awesome. I mean, like, there shouldn't be any moment where there's going to be like, oh, we got to feel this out. We got to see. I mean, no. I want to see aggression right from the get-go. Yep. And we might we might get that. You never know. So Volkanovski, and, and he kind of said it on the show, and he said it again today. He's like, look, man, this dude is just always late. He's unprofessional. He lacks the professionalism <laughs> that it takes to be a part of this. You know, and uh, you know what? I can – there is something – I thought that was so funny when, when, when Brian was like, what, he's upset because I'm late or well, something? You know, I was going to say, and Ortega just showed up. I was like, what? Like, I'm a few well, minutes late. Like, it, so it, what? It was funny when he was saying so about – funny. He was saying about how uh, uh, he's so unprofessional. And then Ortega told the story about how he went clubbing the Holloway fight week. But yeah. last last Saturday night, he decided he wouldn't do it. I nearly said, well, how can he call you unprofessional? You didn't go to a nightclub the other day. <laughs> That was pretty interesting, right? Yeah. So I guess I Ortega, didn't know that. Was that like, kind of revealed that, known that, 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 that the week of it the Holloway known? fight, he went to a nightclub on, I think he said the Tuesday night of, yeah. the, of the fight, that he went to a nightclub. Now, he did say that he didn't drink, or at least he said, I thought it would be okay if I didn't drink. He didn't actually say he didn't drink, but I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. I also think he might have changed the, the I, always, I also think he might change the day. Because he paused a bit before he said Tuesday. I think, right? I think it might have been a bit late. Like Friday that. night? I mean, yeah. what, what club do you know is banging on a Tuesday that Brian Ortega is like, I got to go to this fight. You know like, hey, Tuesday night, I just flew into town. Yeah. I'm just getting checked in, but I got to go to the club. So that's an astute point there. It's a astute point. Yeah, it just seemed to pause a little bit. Like, should I say this? Should I not? And Yeah, it's a funny guy. Nope. I, it's funny as well that you said that, oh, um, they're kind of annoyed at each other, but also have enough self-awareness to say, it's only because we've been around each yeah. other. So, so yeah. even, even Alex said, you know, I'm around a guy I'm competing with that long. It's always going to happen. It's always going to happen. So, yeah. here's, so here's the thing that I thought was funny. Now, again, you never know if the second guy was watching the first guy because we live stream it, right? Yeah. So they had the benefit of the doubt. But I did think it was funny. And, I mean, I guess Volkanovski has kind of said it before, but, like, somebody brought up the fact that, like, hey, Volkanovski said you're, you're unprofessional. And Ortega said, what, just because I'm late? Like, he didn't say or, t or the Volkanovski said you're yeah, late yeah, all yeah, the time, yeah. you know. What I mean? But I mean, he has said it on the show, so maybe, maybe he just maybe he did. So but maybe he, he just, probably said on the show. No, he, he, was, he was he was very angry about the lateness, about the, about know. the tardiness or whatever. So I, I, was I he late for like everything in the show? Yeah, there was so like, like the challenges the, or just like no. What? So like the one time I remember the episode I saw was when they had the fight picks. You know, they announced the fight, oh, pick, and yeah. he was 50 minutes late. Oh yeah, you gotta show up for that. And uh, Volkanovski was like, "You're a piece of shit," and Brian just kept Brian just kept laughing, just like. That's awesome. I think Brian was outside smoking a fat one, to be honest with you. Still time to binge watch if you want to get it in. Uh, Ultimate Fighter 29. It's on ESPN Plus on demand if you want to catch it. Plenty of time for you, Cole Coffee. Are you getting a fucking page I know. Are you getting a fucking page out? Are you getting a fucking page out? No, I was. It, it, dude, Why, I will go home, John, and watch that ESPN Plus <laughs> at. <laughs> <laughs> Promotional conspiracy. Run of you right now. Just kidding. I'm <laughs> and I'll no. watch that and all the other great content on there. No, just kidding. <laughs> ESPN Plus. <laughs> no, it, it was uh, – listen, it, it, it did give me more flair. Okay, so now I want to talk about the fight. Because here's what I'm really intrigued about. So we, we, we get the, the, the drama between the two aside, the fight itself, right? So, listen, I ended up picking Volkanovski in this fight, okay? Yeah. Um, I, I have been one of the few, I think, that's been on Volkanovski's side on, on, on this run. I, I picked him against Max. Um, I, I've, I've been a big proponent of Volkanovski and, and how good I think he is. I think he gets disrespected a little bit. However – Boy, I tell you what, man, Brian Ortega does present some unique challenges for him, right? Because you think about Volkanovski, um, you, you know, decent little wrestling game, decent little clinch game, you know, kind of inside tight. Obviously, he's a, he's a smaller, compact guy, so he's going to want to fight you compact, in tight, in close. Ortega is dangerous as it comes from those positions. And, you know, Ortega is getting better at striking. I will say I do lend a little bit into what Volkanovski says where, hey, let's not take too much – from that Korean zombie performance. There's a reason they call him the Korean zombie, and that's because he get hit a whole lot. Yeah. And, and so let's not give him too much there. So I don't know. I, here's a, it, This is one of those weird picks for me where I pick Volkanovski, and I do think it's a competitive matchup. So it's not like I'm sitting here saying, like, I put my mortgage payment on Volkanovski. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. I, it's a competitive fight. So I pick Volkanovski. But I do think Ortega really can present some real problems for Volkanovski. Here. Yeah, it's funny because Ortega. It's I feel like the Ultimate Fighter plus the postponement from COVID and stuff really slowed the 
the attraction of this fight down. But when you, you know you're a couple of days away, you actually think, oh, this is a very good mixed martial arts fight here. You know, this is very exciting. I did. Yeah. I think. Um, Ken said about how he expects them to come out just guns are blazing. I don't think so. I think Volkanovski is very, very measured. But it it wouldn't surprise me. This is the sort of fight where Volkanovski could be winning for 23 minutes of it and then gets tapped out. You know, I think Brian can just latch on. Because, Vol yes. because Volkanovski, as seen in both of his fights with Max, he's not the sort of guy who, if he's winning a fight, doesn't necessarily mean he's beating the shit out of you. It could just mean he's outpointing you. It could just right. mean he's doing enough to win. So Brian will always have the ability to tap anyone out at any time. Yep. So I can see a world where Volkanovski is trying to keep it at range and Brian striking has come on, but not enough to beat the very solid um, fundamentals that Arlovsky... Uh, Arlovsky, what the fuck? Volkanovski. It'll be a tough matchup for him. Yeah, he's, right. last guy, I mean, he's older <laughs> these days, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that would fight. be a super <laughs> tough match. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think Volkanovski uh, could be winning, but I, it's just a, a tough one to call because also, lest we forget, Brian's been really kind of inactive. You know, right. Brian, he had one, the Korean Zombie fight and then it was a long time before that that he had the Holloway fight, you yeah. know, where he was out clubbing all the week, you know. But, uh, I don't know, it's an exciting fight. I think on in terms of the card and which fight, as a fight intrigues me the most is probably this one. I agree. I agree. I just stylistically, man, it's a super intriguing fight. Cole Coffey, you remember which way you leaned in this one? Did you? Uh, I you went Volkanovski. You went Volkanovski as well, but similar I did. concerns, or is this one where you feel like? No, I mean, because I went, I went back and forth before. I mean, I went, I, went, I remember at one point, I think I, I chose Ortega against Holloway, and then I uh, was like, oh, okay, wow, you know, I didn't expect that how he would fare against a striker. Yeah. And in this one, I mean, if if he, if he's able to get him to the ground, I think he's going to do pretty decently well. But I think I think the striking of Volkan uh, of Volkanovski is going to is going to win the day. Also, I mean, I getting mean, him down is no easy feat either. Volkanovski's right. a solid wrestler, right? Right. You know. I mean, it's it's it's. I don't know. I mean, like, but when you look at those, you look in those those baby blue eyes, and it's just hard to not, not. I don't even know if they're actually blue. Wait, they are that deeper than the blue ocean. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. I oh, now but that the I hair's back as well. well when he took the, when know. he took the hat off, I mean, did anyone else's uh, table rise? Did, I thought I thought he did it. I was like, did he go into slow motion all of a sudden? Yeah, you know, his hair and was and sure. And the, yeah, just started kind of wisping in the breeze. Oh, and then there was God. like Came glitter the all of a sudden, enough to make a man sorry, let alone a woman. <laughs> But no, I, w I went to I went to Volkanovski on this one. Um, I don't know. I just I just I was really. S I'm just his performances and what he's done lately. Uh, I just can't pick against the. He's got the champ bonus power going on. He's got yeah. he's got a little something extra going on right now. And I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Ortega can put it together. But he needs to be fully complete. He has to pull something out that I think we haven't seen before. He's going to have to show up and surprise us with the striking. If he comes up with just, you know, coming out being a decent striker, but you could tell he's always trying to get him to the ground and he eats way too many punches, uh, he'll just get the damage and then at some point he's just depleted. Because even after Max got him to a certain point, he's he couldn't see and then it was yeah. just like it wasn't – the threat was gone. And uh, I, I think Alex has every bit of strength and power to do that. And uh, It's a great fight, man. 20, it is. It's going to be fun. Twenty-two I mean, and one against fifteen and one. I know, that's I know. it. I mean, like so it's one of those. Man. It's one of those fights where I think people will be on the edge of their 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 seats, wondering and waiting for somebody to pull that moment out. You know. Um, I should say by the way that both of them had no issue with the name Max Holloway being brought up. You know, I yeah. thought I thought Volkanovski. Yeah. Obviously, Ortega wants that fight. No question about that. I thought Volkanovski might be a little hesitant to say like, "Hey, man, stop, stop well, saying that name to me. Stop I, saying that name." I mean, I wonder if maybe there was an agreement when he got the tough gig. We'll give you this tough gig, but you're fighting fucking Max if you win, you know? True, true. And listen, uh, still waiting on the uh, the confirmation of Holloway Yair. I know that's a report, but I've heard that there's some well, you know, I did, issues I did. behind the scene about that fight coming together. I did so. I did think it was funny when uh, Alex said, oh, well, he's fighting Yair, right? It's the winner of that fight who gets the title shot. I was like, I don't know if Yair is getting a title shot anytime soon. <laughs> <funny."> <laughs> yeah. That might be a bigger surprise there. Yeah. So, uh, listen, it seems like Holloway could be lined up for the winner of this one. Uh, good interviews from both those guys, so definitely check it out. They'll be at the press conference as well. Let's talk about the co-main event, Valentina Shevchenko versus Lauren Murphy. Um, you know what, let's do this because, listen, it, it doesn't take a, a genius to figure out that Valentina Shevchenko is, you know, I always say it, if she, I, I consider her pound for pound number 1B on the planet. You yes. know what I mean? I feel like her and Amanda Nunes are, are so good that it, it, it's a damn shame that one of them has to be number two. Picking against her doesn't uh, happen very often. But Laura Murphy, 
I do love the way that she has her attitude, her mental game, the way she's at least talking about it. And I think not lying about it, I think honestly has gotten herself to this belief point. And so I did want to at least play some audio from Lauren Murphy to see how she's feeling or at least how she's approaching this because um, as I joke with her, you know, oh, by the way, Valentina, pretty good fighter, you know what I mean, <laughs> yes. at this point. And, uh, and, and I thought she took it pretty well. So let's hear from Lauren Murphy first, and then we'll, uh, then we'll talk about this fight. So, Lauren, is this the, uh, like, like the best fight week of your career, or, or are you having, like, the worst cravings of your career? It seems like you're, uh, you're, you're seeking some food more, more than most fight weeks. No, I always crave food about this point in the weight cut. It starts get, like, I, I love food. I love to eat. I always have. And uh, it's always about this point in the weight cut. But I feel like, you know, I'm just getting a little more comfortable putting myself out there on social media and just kind of having fun. Actually, I haven't posted uh, any food for today's countdown. Not yet, but yeah, I'm just trying to have some fun and put myself out there a little bit more. So this is, you know, this is who I am. I love to eat. <laughs> I do crave food when I'm cutting weight. Yeah, That's funny. Well, listen, you've, I mean, you've been working for a long time to get here, right? You've been talking about this moment and deserving it. And now it's finally here. So, so what is the feel now, right? I'm sure you've been imagining this moment for a long time and now it's that time. So what's, what's the feel for you? Uh, you know, it's really not that different than any other fight week, to be honest with you. Uh, it's fun. I love fight week. I love that, like, all the really hard work is done. Um, this is the part where we get to cruise in and start, you know, really enjoying ourselves. And, and there's always some stress during fight week. You know, you're traveling every, you know, you got a million things to, um, look over and mind and, and make sure it's going right. But I've learned really how to really start handling that stress so much better. Like, I, I, you know, I keep telling myself, like, stressors are going to happen and we're going to over overcome them like a champion would, you know? And so it's it's actually kind of cool. And, like, I don't want everything to, to be so smooth because then I would be like, what's really going on here? <laughs> you know, it's, it's there's always some stress associated with fight week and with fighting in general. But um, it's cool, man. This is a cool life. This is a really cool life. I... Most days I feel in awe that I've gotten to spend, you know, a great part of my adult life being a professional athlete. It's not something I ever would have planned for myself. And I, honestly, like when I wake up in the morning, I'm like, man, if I if my life had turned out the way that I would have picked it for myself, I would have sold myself short a thousand times over. This is better than anything I could have come up with for myself. I love this. It's an awesome way to say it. Um, so I'm curious, like, what's the balance, right? Because as you just said, it's a heck of an accomplishment to be here, right? I mean, to be in this position is meaningful, and you should probably enjoy it and take it in and, you know, relish it all, but it's not the actual goal, right? The goal is to bring home the title. So what's the balance in, you know, respecting and enjoying where you are, but also realizing we're not quite there yet? Yeah, the goal is to just kind of stay in the moment, take stuff day by day. Um, um, you know, is it, like when I say stay in the moment, I mean like I want to recognize what's going on right now. I want to feel the way I'm feeling about it. I want to, um, I, I want to recognize what's happening right now and enjoy these moments. And so, of course, the goal is to win the fight this weekend. But the goal is to really enjoy what I'm doing, stay in the moment, keep breathing, keep having fun, and um, and uh, yeah, that's the main goal, you know. And when I'm doing that, I feel like I'm at my very best. That's awesome. No secret, of course, Valentina, pretty good fighter. Uh, she does all right. All right so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so when you when you watch her, when you're breaking her down, when you're competing, I mean, do you see like spots and you're like, oh, there's an opportunity there, there's an opportunity there, there's an opportunity there, or do you see? I think what a lot of us see was just a, just a really really well rounded fighter that you have to fight perfectly, right? Well, nobody's perfect, you know, but she, um, she is a very well-rounded fighter. You don't get to be a dominant champion by having holes in your game, you know. And so when I watch her fight, it's not like she has these big glaring weaknesses that I'm like, oh, yeah, I could take advantage of that for sure. You know, I think those days are over. Uh, you don't get to be where she's at by not being well-rounded and by not being really, really damn good at everything. Um, but everybody's human. Everybody has habits and um, things that are exploitable. Everybody has weaknesses. And anybody that thinks that they don't have a weakness, that in itself is a great weakness. Um, it, everybody makes mistakes. And at this level, that's what we're looking at is like, what habits does she have? Um, you know, what areas can we take this fight where I feel the most comfortable? How are we going to accomplish that? What sequences do I want to accomplish in this fight? And so, yeah, when I watch Valentina, 
Um, of course she's a great fighter. Of course she's well-rounded. That is what makes her such a formidable opponent and such a dominant champion. But I'm really, I'm really good in every area of the fight too. And uh, I'm really looking forward to testing myself in those areas. I'm looking forward to making those sequences happen that I want to happen in the fight. And honestly, I, I can't wait to go show you guys how good I've gotten. I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. It's awesome. Last thing for me, I guess. What, what would this win mean for you, right? I mean, as you said, it's already a victory that you're here. You know, you've gone well beyond what you envisioned for yourself. But what would a, a title winning performance here mean for you? Uh, you know, it would be a really cool moment in a in a career full of really cool moments, honestly. Like, and I, I hope. You know, people are like, is this the greatest moment of your career? And I'm like, damn, I hope not. I hope there's more great moments after this. You know, I hope that this is not the pinnacle. I hope the pinnacle is somewhere far beyond than what I even imagine now. You know, because like I said, if I got everything that I wanted and if things worked out the way I thought they should, I would have sold myself short. So who knows what the peak is of my career? I, I don't know yet, you know, but that's what I'm trying to find out here. So... This is just one more step in that journey and winning that title on Saturday night is going to be a huge accomplishment, obviously, for me and for my coaches. Um, but it's just going to be a testament to finding out how far I could push myself. I want to know what's possible for me. And that's what I'm trying to find out here. And that's what I'm trying to find out Saturday night. And that's what I'm going to be trying to find out in my next fight and the next fight after that. You mentioned the overconfidence that you, you think she might have. Do you think it's hard for her to, and I, I even saw a quote from her earlier this week, she said she was going to destroy you and that sort of stuff. Do you think it's hard to be as dominant as her and not get overconfident eventually? Uh, I mean, I, I would imagine so. I would think that she probably feels like she can destroy anybody. And um, as a champion, I think you do need to have some, obviously some level of confidence. I'm not the one to say where her line is between being properly confident and overconfident. I don't know. Do you think, let's, again, I'm sort of casting hypotheticals here that she may be overconfident because she's had this great run. Do you think at that point you're actually catching her at a great time where she can just underestimate everyone she fights? I don't, I don't think that Valentina is the kind of fighter that underestimates her opponents. Like she's been doing this for a very long time. I'm sure she's, you know, she's a very experienced fighter, not just in MMA, but in, you know, other sports as well. Um, and I think she's had a lot of experience, you know, probably in some of her fights, like in some of her kickboxing fights, maybe she was the underdog. Maybe, maybe she's already had opponents, you know, that she underestimated or whatever. So, uh, I don't know. I couldn't tell you guys what she's thinking about me or what she, what she feels about me. Like that, I honestly don't care. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Winning a world title is obviously very special, but defeating a champion like her, is that just extra? Is that extra glory for you? Do you even think about that sort of stuff? I don't. Uh, I really just want to stay focused on what I can do. And like, um, you know, I've beat some really good fighters before, not just in the UFC, but I, you know, I fought for, I fought for titles at other times in my career where I was a heavy underdog. And for me, it's really, it's just about like, how well can I perform? How great can I be? What is my limit? Can I go out there? Can I go out there under this pressure? Can I go out there under those bright lights? Can I go out there and face somebody like her and perform at my very best? And I think that if I can do that, I believe I can beat anybody in the world. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. All right, so lucky Lauren Murphy. Uh, I mean, look, you have to get a little bit lucky to beat Valentina Shevchenko, right? I mean, I, I don't mean to uh, – again, I do not want to downplay Lauren Murphy. I, I like Lauren a lot as a person, as a fighter, and I do – I love the mindset she's here. The, the mental attitude that she has I think is admirable, and that's why I wanted to highlight it. I'm still picking Valentina Shevchenko, and I mean that as no disrespect. I just – I wouldn't pick anybody in the division – against Valentina Shevchenko right now, but I do like what I'm hearing for Lauren Murphy, man, and uh, man, I just don't see how you can't be, I mean, if, if you don't want to say inspired by her story, like at least be admirable of where she came from to where she is, yeah. man, and, and I love that when she says, if I'd have picked my own destiny, I would have sold myself short because I'm way beyond where I ever thought I could go, man, I just, I, I just thought that was cool. awesome, man. I mean, it's one thing, I mean, luckily we don't have to, when we make picks, unfortunately we have to pick one over the other. There's always a winner. There's always a loser. We can only pick one. But in terms of liking the people and the liking the characters and liking the stories, 
luckily enough that we can like the stories. Mm -hmm. And both of them have great stories, but you're right. I mean, I love everything. I love the journey that Lauren's been on. I love how she shared it. I mean, I, I mean, even got like the weird ah feeling today when she's asked like, what was the best part of whatever? I forget how they phrased the question. And she, she said the best part of the journey was like her family, her husband, you know, her yep. husband, you know, and, and then having a kid that's doing well, you know, I mean, how can you not like a person that, She's she's fighting at the top level, but she's also got her head on her shoulders, and she's saying the right things. She's doing the right things. She's appreciative of family. She's appreciative of what she's achieved. You know, she believed in herself. Mm -hmm. How can you not like that person? Unfortunately, just when you make a pick, it's not like you're saying, oh, I don't like this person over another person. Thank goodness. I mean, because both of them are great people. They're both wonderful. Some people might say that Lauren's story maybe is better than Valentina's story. But Valentina's got a pretty incredible story as well. Yeah. But in terms of picks, unfortunately, you have to make a pick over one over the other. But I love everything that Lauren's done. And, and lately, at the, at the last couple of times we've seen her events, she's in probably the best spirits that I've, yeah. I've seen her ever in years past. And uh, that makes her a dangerous fighter. Unfortunately, she's just going up against a incredibly dangerous fighter at all know, times. I well, that's mean, why I was going to ask. She's going up against Thanos with the with the glove <laughs> with all the stones in there. You know, I mean, do you, like when you guys watch <laughs> Valentina fight, like, do you see any like? And, and I tried to touch on it a little bit there, but like, do you see any place in her game where you're like, you know what? If I was because I'm going to be honest with you, like, I don't see many. Like, I don't even know how the hell I would game plan for other than like. Let's just create utter chaos yeah. and see what happens. Because if we do anything, if we do technical striking, if we do technical grappling, like she is probably going to beat me. But let's just go in and create madness and see if we can find something. That's, I mean, and, and that that sounds like a horrible game plan. Like yeah. let's just create chaos. But I feel I, I, at this point, I feel like that's the only way to beat her. Yeah, it, it, Valentina, I think because of her division and probably because of her gender, to be honest. Is that her? She's super underappreciated as a fighter. Like I, uh, something that really drove it home for me was actually the other day, the UFC put out footage of her sort of touch sparring with Brandon Moreno. Right. She's fucking lighting him. By the up. way, yeah, <laughs> he's light. Touch, touch sparring was a light way to put that, man. Yeah. They were a nice way. They they were having a little fun in there, yeah. man. It was it's pretty amazing but to see. But in that. terms of her technique, her ability to turn like a high kick into a spinning back elbow and stuff, it really drove home like like she is so sharp. Yeah. So. You can't out technique her. I mean, Joanna and Jacek, fantastic fighter. The issue is when you go to plan A, Valentina's plan B, C, and D, you know, so she can out muscle, she out muscle Jessica and Draj, she out technique uh, Joanna and Jacek. So when you look at that, it, 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 when you talk about Lauren Murphy's routes to victory, they become slimmer and slimmer. And even, I think, unfortunately, if you try and make it chaotic and just windmill in, uh, that's probably where Valentina has the composure of a champion to just sort of slip and take a shot. So and, right. You know? So right. It's it's funny. We were talking about the greatness. of, And, and, and I hope people do realize. Like, Valentina Shevchenko really is one of the greatest martial artists on the oh, planet yeah, right now. Period. century. Uh, dude, when you start beating people at their games just because, like, you want to prove yeah. something, like, you want to show something, like, that's, that's next level stuff, man. She's unbelievable. Yeah, she's really good. And I think uh, it, it's almost a shame that – the first Nunes fight happened when it did because they were just not who they are now. Mm -hmm. And it sucks that the second fight was so incredibly shit um, or underwhelming, whichever word you want to use there. But uh, it, it, it's kind of because that second one was so, like, not great, it, it's pushed them apart. When if these were, if this was a, a featherweight and a lightweight male fighter in those two divisions, I feel like everyone would want to just see them go at it again I'm and so again. I'm so torn on that, man, because, again, and I always say, I'm 1A and 1B in terms of me for, for, for best female fighter on the planet. Uh, I'm so torn on that because, like, seeing it again, I mean, it, it is the two most dominant champions in the women's game right now. Yeah. I mean, maybe two of the most dominant champions ever. I mean, I guess if you want to consider Rousey when this was, like, the pre, yeah, you know, yeah. pre day before it was really developed to where it is now, I just feel like the size difference. I mean, what is, what is, what is like, Shevchenko do like wake up and skip breakfast and she weighs in whereas <laughs> yeah. meanwhile like Amanda to make 35 is like you know it's a process and she so it's just, I feel like their natural walking around weight and their natural size is so I don't different. Th I don't think that's why Valentina lost them though maybe the first no. one but the second one I felt it was just uh, who threw like one or two punches more right so th but I will say that since that fight the size difference actually gotten bigger because like, Amanda's gotten bigger right yep. so there there is that argument 
Um, it would just be a shame not to see it. You know, it doesn't. I know. It doesn't. I, I agree with you, right? Like, I'm not. I, I'm not clamoring to see it, but it would be a shame to have them in the it, prime it, it and not do it again. It doesn't feel to me like oh, Dustin and Max. You know, I saw that fight once. The right. size difference was so stark to me in that fight. I don't need to see it again, really, because I saw how big the size made a difference in that fight. Yeah. I don't feel the same about Amanda. And Shevchenko might be a different animal right now, right? Like yeah. now, the confidence is really there. Yeah. The, you know what I mean? The she knows who she is, so I. Again, I'm not clamoring for it, but I do agree with you. It'd be a I damn. I think at some point it's just like, again. what do you? How can you not? You know, if Amanda's really, you know, it's rumored to be close to walking away, or feels like she can walk away at any moment, you can't let them her go without doing it one more time, right? Right. And I think I think it'd be one of those fights that if you did it, if you put it together, people would probably be whatever about it. But then come fight night, I bet it would feel like a big fight. Night. It would. It yeah. would. I mean, I don't think Amanda would 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 be upset at all if that fight never happens. No, UFC, I think Amanda yes. seems really uncaring about I it. I mean, UFC, yes, or we – but I think it, that's just a fight that we want to see. Amanda, I think, is just – her. already her, did it, right? I've already, already did, did it, it, you know, like multiple times, you know. Like, it is it is what it is. I mean, like, if you make it worth her while, perhaps she will. But I think with right now, with the way her head is, she's seeing the, the, the end of her career, you know, legacy – motherhood she's got her head in just different other things different spot all the all the things that used to matter and drive are are different you know i think uh we're gonna see, i'm i think we're already seeing the transition at, at a point it's going to get to the point where you know her partner did what she needed to do there's a kid now now it's i can see it there's going to be a point where amanda's going to transition and amanda will be the caregiver and I then, agree. and it's going to be time. Let Nina, let, let Nina, Nina chase do, her. It'll be of her time career, for Nina right? to fight, and really, every every bit of focus is going to be the, on that. You know, um, Amanda, she. I don't think she would lose a night of sleep if that fight never ever happened, unless there's a possibility the UFC's like we're going to throw a ton of cash to make it happen. But I don't think they care that much that that fight ever happens. No, her spot in history. We is care about too. it more her on the outside. Yeah, she her legacy is already done. I mean, it's it's they're secure, like you said. She has nothing to prove. I mean, and like that fight doesn't change anything. Mm-hmm. So what happens if she goes in? Oh yeah, and she gets another finish, or she gets a finish, or she gets a win. What do we say? We're like, ah, we knew that was gonna happen. Yeah. Oh, we knew that could happen, or whatever. You know, the only the only thing that stands is that oh hey, you know Val got that one that we knew that was right there. That but she then was at that close. point, then you just say, well, yeah, but Amanda had kind of checked out at that point. You know what I mean? Yeah. She really was. If she came back, she could. You know what I mean? She yeah. could do it again. So. Uh, anyway, listen, I, I, I just want to say I, I respect the greatness of Valentina Shevchenko. I think, a, like I said, she's, one she's of the best martial artists, period, on the planet. One of the best to ever level. do it. Hey, you're, I you're mean, absolutely right. Unbelievable. Uh, all right, let's talk about the rest of, the, uh, of these fights, see what intrigues you. Uh, on the main card, Curtis Blades versus Jarzinho Rosenstrike. I'm going to be honest. I picked Curtis Blades in this fight. I know we just saw Curtis get absolutely slept by Derek Lewis, and Jarzinho absolutely has the ability to do that. There are, as, as, as Curtis mentioned today, there are a lot of similarities between them. They're not the exact same fighter, but, you know, they are big heavyweight kickboxers. They are big heavyweight kickboxers that don't throw four, five, six, seven punches at a time. At, you know, they try to tee up on that one. Uh, Jarzinho and Derek Lewis are not the same fighter, but they're very, sim- <laughs> they're very similar. And it's funny because we just saw Curtis get slept by Derek Lewis, yet I think Curtis Blades is – I, I think he's going to well, dominate just this not, fight. He's not going to make the second mistake again, right? That's the <laughs> I think so. Just learns not, not to set that up. Um, and then, of course, Jessica Andrade versus Cynthia Cavillo as well. Um, I'd be interested I, what you guys picked on that one. I, I'm, I'm interested in this fight. So I went with Jessica Andrade in this one just um, based on pedigree, I think, even though she's had yep. the losses as of lately and I guess the time away for Cynthia Cavillo and, and where she stands at this point. But um, I'm intrigued by this one. And – I love the fact that, I mean, obviously Jessica Andrade is one of the nicest people on the planet. She's not going to be offended, but I don't know if you, did you guys see the, the Cynthia Cavillo like posted on her Instagram when they tried to get this fight done? You know, they talked about today, but I guess they were at an Invicta event and like they did a stare down picture and then posted it and got the fight book. Like I thought maybe they had taken a picture like years ago or something yeah. and Cynthia was like, I'm going to put this up on Instagram. I thought that was kind of cool. Jessica to be like, all right, you want to fight me? Because I mean, look. Cynthia was a rising star. She's taking a step back. Jessica, a former champion, you know, obviously she's had some losses, but she's losing to the absolute best. I think in terms of, like, career stature, Jessica Andrade is a few steps above. So she could have been like, hold on there, young buck. Back up. We ain't doing no (laughs) face-off. But for her to say, like, yeah, let's do this face-off picture, and you can put it on social media and say, let's do the challenge. It's good. So I don't know. Out of those main card fights, one of them 
intrigue you more than the other, or, or do you have like a really strong feel about one of them or the uh, other? No, I think I think Curtis and Jorginho will be will be fun, but I expect it to look like how I thought Derek was going to look. You know, I think right. Curtis is, will clinch him up, and also we saw. Uh, Cyril Garn sort of out clinch Rosen Strike, right? right? If he can do that, then so do you know, Curtis Blades can do that. Andrade and Cynthia, I actually am looking forward to. Um, in a weird, I can't explain why way, just a weird feeling. I felt Cynthia was a little bit off today. I don't know why, just seemed a little bit. A lot of people kind of said that, that it seemed like maybe, uh, I don't know. Yeah. She, she was a little bit off, yeah. as you said. She kind of got lost a little bit. No, that's his. I'm good for another one, thank you. Oh, but they they just bring in more frosty know, beverages than we can even handle, which but I love it. That was supposed to be for you. But I think I think Jesse. Oh uh, well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry to the. We can't base. even keep track yeah, of who's got frosty beverages well, anymore. Well, the glasses just moved around. Which uh, I love it. But I think Jessica and Charge will probably prove her. Um, you know, I think she'll prove her, her level above yeah. Cynthia at the moment. You know, Cynthia's got a long way to go. I think maybe Cynthia got a bit of the hype train, the Dana White hype train behind she her a little bit did. too early. Uh, and I think Jessica's really good. You know, so I, I kind of expect Jessica to come out of that one on top. I picked Calvillo on that. Calvillo. I did. Look at you. It's funny because I always want to tr like shred your picks, but you've always beat me on five He's always picks. at the top. <laughs> so I never know He's always at the top. He's but now I'm the trying to – I messed up last week, and I realized that the only way I'm ever going to catch Morgan for this season is i got to make picks. Got to start making some other drugs. i got to make, the, I gotta make picks for the underdogs. But once you start chasing, man, once well, you start chasing, like, that's now what you tail really Like I really – like last week hurt. Now at this point, I'm just, I just resolved. But I, I'm so happy to say that the MMA Roadshow will take the, the, the award this year. We'll talk about the standings, sir. Last time we <laughs> talked about the standings, I think I immediately fell the second well, then place. But then if you fail, then I'll, I'll rise back up. So uh, that would be good. But I, but I am – nope, I'm not even going to say it. I'm not even going to say it. All right. Pre hey, prelims, listen, I did want to kind of run through these real quick. Um, Rob DeVosvili versus Marlon Marias. I'm really That's the one I'm excited about. I'm super you asked about main card. This is the fight I was – I is the agree, other one. right? This Look, is the fight. I, I have been uh, a Marab supporter from day one. I think some of his UFC losses uh, were unfortunate, and I think, honestly, he could have a better record than he does. Uh, Marlon Marias is on a little bit of a downswing, but Marlon Marias, I mean, that dude can put your lights out, dude. There's no yeah. question about it. So, I'm going to treat him I, I, um, I'm I leaning Marab on this fight, and I do think I, I've always said from the time he came into the UFC, I think Marab is going to fight for a title at some point uh, in the UFC. Um, but this is another stiff test, and maybe a chance for him to really – I feel like Marab is – Criminally underrated. Yeah, it's his Th signature win, right? Yeah, this That's what you're means. exactly. It. This would be the signature win that he uh, yeah. that he's lacking. And I think as far as Marlon being on a downturn, absolutely true. But I think that's just this division, man. You could put number three against number fourteen, and it's probably going to be near a toss up. You know, just that that top. 20, in fact, because even like people like Yanis and David Grant aren't ranked. That top 20, 25 even. Like that's yeah. so, so, so close. So I think I'm picking Marab. I think his skills are just more well-rounded. I think he's a problem in that division. Yep. I really, really do. I think maybe because he's kind of a uh, bit under, you know, bit sort of mild-mannered, and I think his 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 style isn't necessarily as crowd-friendly as someone like Mar uh, Marlon's, but yes. I, I think... You know, but it's effective. If he if he defeats Marlon, I want to see him against like some you know one of those really bigger names. You know, I agree. Top of it. I love uh, you walked in with this camera. He's like, I started a YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, 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 like, yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> he's like, I record everything. Uh, all right, Nazareth Hakparas, Dan Hooker. Are we holding out hope this thing happens? Yeah, are, we, yeah, are we giving yeah. up on it yet? It's not happening. No, I think not it happening. is happening. Nazareth yeah. put out a statement earlier saying he's going to the embassy tomorrow and it has his bags packed ready to get his visa and fly over right away. I mean, do I think either of them will put in the showing of their career? Unlikely. I think the UFC should probably just go, lads, you can be 160. Right? I was going to say, but... So, I mean, is Hooker good? I mean, Hooker's not that we... Hook is, Hook is you, good. We can't Hooker's just coming. change weight classes on the week of a fight, Oscar. That's crazy. They <laughs> yeah. signed up for a lightweight <laughs> match. Do, 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 like, do you reckon they're, they're like, bro, can we go middleweight? Do you reckon they're looking at Nick like, the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Bro, if they make weight... Yeah. Oh, I mean, dude, I, it's... Uh, especially with Nazareth having the personal loss of his mother and then Dan just refusing to not... Calm, you know, refusing to do anything again to get here. It really reminds you that fighters are tougher than just being able to take a punch, right? All of these guys are mentally just insane, but also strong. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I will say that I think they should have at least a gentleman's agreement that if there is any fine, because obviously they don't have control of it, yeah. they say he institutes that. It goes to charity. I just think, uh, it goes I, to charity. You take the you take your opponent's fine and you give it to charity. If anybody misses weight, you, you just let we, it go. We've seen multiple times that these apex shows they they give them five pounds of a uh, of a catch weight. You know, 
I, you would hope that Dana and Co would just be like, man, the fact that they're still with it. Like, at one point, it looked like Dan was about to get on a 20-hour international flight with no guarantee he lands to have a fight. You know, that's insane. So I think you've got to give them the credit. Like, well, look, they would they would have done anything. So let's just give them that five-pound present. Let's see what happens. Uh, let's, I'll just round it out. Chris Dawkins, I'm going to be homering for CFSC. Yep. Roxanne Modafferi, I'm going to be homering for Roxanne yep. just because it, it is Roxanne. She's got a tough one there. Talos Santos, yeah, look at that. Her yeah. career record is unbelievable, man. So, uh, listen, I think it's going to be a loaded fight. Uh, real quick, I did want to mention, if for any reason uh, you didn't catch CFFC, well, it's been a busy week for you, man. CFFC 100 last week, straight to my family's house in Dallas for a little vacation, and then, uh, and then here for UFC uh, 266. But I will say, if you didn't see CFFC 100, uh, go watch it on USC Fight Pass. I did have one regret, and, and my one regret was just that I didn't get to drop a total dad joke in there. <laughs> uh, the first fighter of the night, his nickname was The Muffin Man. However, <laughs> I did not know that that was his nickname because I hadn't seen him fight before, and I didn't see that in my research. Uh, as he was being introduced, the producer was talking to me in my ear, which a lot of people not, might not realize. When you're talking, you know, you're doing broadcasting, like you got producers and stuff talking to you. So I did not hear um, that his nickname was the Muffin Man, and he got a beautiful, spectacular first round knockout, and I missed the chance to go. And now you know <laughs> the Muffin Man. <laughs> That's and I was, so I was funny. very. Uh, I, I, I don't know if the, the audience would have understood no. that. <laughs> oh, who doesn't know the Muffin Man? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, I do. So anyway, watch CFFC 100. It was a great show. And by the way, next week, CFFC 101. So we'll be right back to action. I did want to share one other quick story. Just full of sponsored plugs today. Yeah. Wow. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Promotional courtesy paid for by CFFC 100. Uh, no, uh, I, I did want to give one other funny funny little uh, statement. So uh, at, uh, at uh, Dan White's Contender Series, the weigh-ins, on Monday, you know, we, we were there. I, I, I was back. My COVID nineteen quarantine was over. I got yeah. to come back for the for the weigh-ins. We were shooting the weigh-ins and, and taking pictures. And as we were, sh as, you know, I, you shoot the video. Obviously, I'm shooting photos. And uh, as as I'm shooting the photos out of the out of the corner of my eye, I see uh, somebody uh, uh, is walking up to take a picture, like a coach. Somebody in the corner is like walking up, and they're about to walk right into my shot to to uh, to, to block my shot. So I reached out with my left hand on the shoulder and, like, put it on their shoulder <laughs> and, like, yanked them back. And they turned around. It was Mark Coleman. I was like, oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, so sorry, Mark. I yeah. apologize, D sir. Big Daddy Mark. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm surprised you didn't just go, like, hey, 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 hey. Yeah. That you actually got physical with it. No, I, no, I, yeah, yeah. I He's not a small guy. <laughs> He's not a small guy. <laughs> well, I said it was out of the corner of my eye. I didn't say I took <laughs> yes. a straw and look at him. It was out of the corner of my eye. Yeah, as soon as he turned around, I was like, oh, hey, Mark, sorry. Just a little bit in the way there. Can't take you anywhere, buddy. <laughs> 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 then he's like, oh, uh, it's Mr. Morgan. Never mind. No, uh, he was like, shut up, boy. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. All right, well, listen, uh, appreciate everybody. Like I said, a day early. Hopefully that's not the worst thing ever. We don't know exactly what tomorrow night is going to look like. Uh, the red carpet night is going to be crazy a little bit crazy sometimes. time shit show. So that's why I decided a to shit show time. 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 Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> shit show time, show shit show time. <laughs> All right. That's what we do. So hopefully uh, it didn't affect anybody's schedule too much. We uh, appreciate it. We'll have you covered. Obviously, uh, <laughs> patreon.com slash the MA Roadshow. We'll have the and a half as usual on Saturday night. In the meantime, uh, I think we're going to have a couple frosty beverages, maybe see if we can give a little bit of advice to this youngster over here trying to make his way into the industry. And for everybody else, thanks, thanks for listening. listening.